So, hello and welcome back to another playthrough of Rebel Stars 4 with the Ambana Fantasy mod, of course. And as we have just finished with the Potion Makers, it is time to start something new. And it looks like that the last vote has a three-way tie. Which is also first. We and Fang, Hammerhome and Mix seem to be all similar pop uh, of similar popularity. But out of fairness, I think we are gonna play BN Fang because they already they didn't make the last vote, even though it was even. And even though, uh, in my personal interest, is not that much influencing this, because I personally would not like to play BN Fang, but they are here, so whatever. Well, let's jump into the game and have a look at the new nations. But as always, before we jump into the game. We first get a quick look through all of the... This is very laggy. Uh, get a look through all of the potential uh, nations that I'm gonna play next. So three of them, of course, are gonna stay in the straw poll. That being Hammerhome, Mix and Malagna. Hammerhome, of course, being the dwarves in Eskan, building their new home. Mix being the Knoll pirates that deal with drugs and demons. And Malagna being the battle king. That is enough description for, <laughs> for Malagna, Battle King. There's nothing else to be said about them. <laughs> but the new two na the new two nations that I'm gonna add to the mix are gonna be... Uh, I did want another dwarf in the mountains again, so I'm gonna add Olasama's deer, the Ramsteel dwarves. All about their rams and actually actual cavalry. Which of course as a dwarf is... I mean, the thing is, like, the, the Dwarven Cavalry is not efficient, but they make them very efficient, because they get a hilarious amount of boosts. So they're gonna be one of the choice, and the other one is also gonna be Cavalry-based, but also not really horses. We're gonna add the Dugachia, uh, a Dugachia to the mix, the Gavanashi tribes. They are all about their elephants, and basically breeding them to perfection. At the same time, getting all of, like, uh... It's giving a lot of interesting possibilities of what to do with your cavalry as well. So they are they are quite interesting. So we have Hammerhome, Mix, Malagna, Alosama's Deer, and the Indugashia. So as I mentioned before, the the straw poll is in the description as always. So uh, if you want to vote for the next thing, you can do that. But for now, let's jump into Beyond Fang with the Dragon King in charge. Now, personally speaking, if I would have the choice in my life to play Bian Fang, I would probably not play Bian Fang. As I've mentioned in the uh, at the beginning, they're just conquesty. That's what the, that's what they are. But votes are votes, and uh, this, I'm not doing this for me after all. Uh, anyway, <laughs> but so Bian Fang. We have Dragon King Xin Shu Long in charge, a conqueror with Lawgiver. 436, absolutely amazing. Of course, not much to be said about that. We have we are human, we have autocracy, we have nothing special going on here except of course our leadership. This is something that we're gonna go to soon. But it's basically I think we have three kinds of leadership modifiers. For now we have the Pragmatic, which gives us advisor cost reduction, monthly autonomy change, and yearly absolutism. Decent enough. We are also immediately allied to Xiyun, which we are probably gonna foster a very good relationship with. We're gonna support them where we can. We're also gonna, I guess, immediately pick our rivals, and obviously, we're just gonna pick some weak ass nations around us. Uh, we're not gonna, p I guess, we're gonna pick Jin Kyu because they are an easy target, and you because you're also an easy target. Lovely. We make a decent bit of money. Far more importantly, let's have a look at our ideas. We do have in okay, infantry cost, infantry combat ability. Immediately tells me that we're gonna build infantry instead of cavalry. Drill gain modifier, core creation cost, caravan power, cost reducing war exhaustion, harsh rate because I think these ideas change anyway. General cost, military, technology cost, prestige decay, and maximum absolutism, and then discipline. But yeah, I think when we form, like, our mission tree is also very small, but we form into something else, and I think we get new ideas after that. So, 
for now, let's... I guess we can immediately go for two decisions, because one thing that is special about uh, these guys is that they have a tyrant level. Basically meaning how they... I mean, they're just gonna be pop-up soon, but... Basically, we the, this displays how we lead our nation. We can be just pragmatic, which is what we currently have. You can see also that the, the, the yellow color there is basically as long as we stay in that level, we get that modifier. We can be ruthless, which is of course if we want to conquer things, I think probably the best choice. But we can also be benevolent, which increases autonomy, but does a few other decent things. I feel like we're still gonna go for ruthless either way, but yeah, we do have a bunch of decisions here that actually push us in the other in, in a certain direction. And though most of these just want me to have a decent income in points. And that's about it. So we'll see to that. Which is gonna be a thing with our lead, of course, at the moment. Otherwise, uh, we are high philosophy and of course, because we play in Halis, we don't really care about religion or religious drive whatsoever. We just get a, we just get a special thingy and completely negate any problems that might arrive. Very fun. We have the Ascended Soul, which gives us more mi mi uh, admin points and daily army tradition, so there's that. I think these guys are all about discipline and, uh, and such things anyway. We can have a decent bit more troops, so let's do that. So, I think we're just gonna push that fully. So... I mean, first of course, with the state, seize land. Oh, wait. Boop. And yeah, there's the respect local traditions, which just basically removes problems. We are probably gonna... Uh, I think we're not gonna... Uh, before change, we could just say fuck it and just go for full religious unity. I mean, that could be interesting. I mean, looking at religion here... I mean, the righteous path is nearly everywhere. <laughs> uh, we'll see if what we do. Uh, for now, let's uh, continue on here. We will do the oversight by the clergy. I think that's about it for now. Yeah. I think we're gonna take the military point because we want to be right at, at top of that. Right of council, supremacy so over the crown, the usual stuff. We're not gonna give them command of the military, even though it does, does give a lot of stuff. Push of the arts. Free enterprise. Let's do an immediate indebted to the merchant guild, because we're gonna do a lot of early conquest. And I do want to get advisors in as soon as possible. We could even get enforced into faith dialogue if we wanted, but not now. Adventurers, I think we're gonna do the uh, generous quest rewards right away. That should be it for now for all of these guys. Uh, let's get an advisor in right away. Land maintenance for defense. Eh, I guess we'll take that. And I think you actually are perfect. We're gonna take two advisors in right away. We want as many points as possible. One of our first missions is to actually increase our overall manpower and get up to force limit. So we are gonna have to spend a lot of mill points on that. For this, these missions over here, we need to alliance ourselves with uh, these guys. We need to wait for the monks to do something weird. We also need to increase our friendship with Yuxion, which we're gonna do right away. My dearest friend. I guess we are just gonna uh, uh, give a little bit of... Uh, we need to get to 150, right, to get claims? Yeah. So, something else that we want to do? Alliances. I think that... I mean, these guys are probably not the best choices because we're not gonna... We're gonna fight them. So I think, Jian Ziyang, you're gonna be part of this. There we go. Our way of rule is strange to most, yeah. The monks to our west, the decadent and eunuchs down the river, the benevolent kings to the southeast, they all, they all call us one thing. Tyrants. Our administration is efficient, our armies are unmatched, and dissent is not tolerated. They do not understand that this is what the Yan need, if they hope to survive the onslaught of the monstrous Hobgoblin command. Yanshin needs an iron fist, unification, and firm rule. However alien our rule may be to the locals, we must ensure their loyalty one way or another. An iron fist Yanshin will ha shall have, but shall it wear a silken cloth, or will it crush all descents ruthlessly underneath? Yeah, and that's basically what I mentioned. What I get. Something else that I forgot to do is actually summon a diet. 
What do you guys have for me? That's... Yeah. Yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> I take that mission right away. Lovely. Uh, we can immediately do one of these uh, reforms here. And I think we're gonna do the one that pushes us towards Benevolent, because I just like the Yearly Army Tradition here. We of course are gonna get a lot of that from ticking up. But I think these guys want to keep a high uh, army tradition going, so... Let's stick around with that. So. Uh, more allies. Because we're not done yet. Tian Lu. I think we're gonna just add Tian Lu to the mix for now. We're, we're later on just gonna drop them, but... I think at the moment they are gonna be fairly beneficial. Hu Bao. Oh, we need to wait for our boys to come back. We, immediately, we could immediately attack. Wait. Of course, we get the... Yeah, I think that we're gonna do this, right? Before anyone else joins? In Alliance? Okay, they got one ally, but that's alright. Go high. Uh, we're gonna do this one right away. Of course, we are currently still waiting for stuff to come around. Okay, but that's a, that's a fighting general right there. But until then, I would start this fight right away, just so that these guys are not causing any tr trouble. We can have one more ally. Yeah, that's gonna be Hubao. Huba so. Yeah, we did, I mean, the claims we'll get later on anyway. So, why not just do this? We have less troops, but we are gonna get more. And we, we'll want them to... St yeah, let's start this. Before they do anything silly... See, they're running in. They're probably gonna go for a siege. We are just gonna quickly get our infantry together. Zoop. There we go. That is perfect. Uh, both of these armies are around. They're standing here in the jungle, I assume. Let's see if we can jump on you. Because you have for some reason separated yourself from the rest of your friends. 3-4-3. Three, three. I mean, not as good as you. Wait, you're a powerful mage. Okay, that's interesting. But I think, yeah, we're gonna take the... Uh, air here. 3-4, three, I mean, before we get something shit. I think we'll just do that. Yep, yeah, just just run into these guys. That should be alright. These guys are not gonna join in time anyway. We of course are getting hurt here. But before someone else joins... Okay, there would be... Is that it? Or do we need to wait for... I need, you need to be at war with someone. That's what we... That what this is. Okay. The question is now, do we jump towards uh, you or do we... Nah, I think we're gonna focus on here. We have pushed them in. This is not a decent start. I guess we're gonna... T we're gonna have unrest anyway. So we might as well. Okay. You're gonna go for this fort here. They are gonna run out here and sneak past, probably, or do something weird. Either way, we need to push through this fort at some point. Okay, they are getting some troops in. I think we're just gonna occupy that real quick. They're gonna re, re siege that. But yeah, before, the, before it gets too crazy, we need this, like, we need this fort. It's gonna probably drain all of our manpower to do this. And we cannot really uh, separate some numbers. Okay, they are going for this siege here. If they go for the capital, it's also alright. Maybe I should have taken the... Oh no, that's alright. So the quo. It really depends on how fast these guys are uh, on that siege. Food shortage. Because as soon as we have taken, like, you probably have some interest here, I assume. 
yeah, you want you would take all of this. So we need to occupy this and then call them in because we're currently getting favors with them. I guess we could actually speed that up. The thing is, I don't want to upset these guys by promising them territory, not giving them any. That is fairly uh, that is fairly important. But yeah, our manpower is already gone, basically. That is why we do need to get this. Can I actually... Because I would actually do this here. Because this is gonna delay our... Uh, mill tech. But at the same time... I think we just... Uh, want to get these claims done. Overall. This was also like... We don't don't care about being at war, right? Yeah. So they now have more troops standing around here. This is why I think I should just go. Oh, of course, to get a wall, to get some walls breached. Yeah, we do also need to get uh, the mercenaries in. Probably you guys. Either way, court of the Eunuch King. Xiun is a strange kingdom. Ne nephew succeeds uncle. The power is now that uh, rooted in impotence, and the king lacks more than one kind of scepter. Yet they may prove to be a valuable ally against the savage tea drinkers and breast ganging whalers to the south as we guard Yanshan against demons and hobgoblins to the north. We rightly backed uh, the reigning Xi dynasty against the rebellious eunuchs in the Xiyun civil war. To continue cultivating our alliance with Xiyun, we should send emissaries to establish a permanent embassy in the court of the eunuch king. We get trust and we get claims on what we are currently fighting. So, that's why I was that willing to immediately do this. So, let's see if we... I mean, this is just grassland, right? So it's not the best. Of but we cannot wait, so there's that. So let's get in this army. If you now succeed at 14%, I'm gonna be very upset. Okay. Uh, we're gonna run into this. They're probably gonna reinforce that as well. Okay, they're not uh, doing that good. So, you guys, you start dealing with these boys on the side. Because I do need that extra manpower. Actually, I might even send you in to fight these guys. Because I don't really care about you guys losing numbers. So, this might be a decent decision. Okay, they also got mercenaries. Also, you've done something very silly that, that I immediately fight. Okay, they have everything together, so we need to get the army around. Before they reinforce too much. Uh, we can stop with this. Uh, cruelty of mercenaries. Uh, seriously? I guess we're gonna take the professionalism right away. So, this is a fairly chunky fight. This is also jungle, right? It's minus two. Oh no, only minus one. Okay. This is gonna drain a lot of our numbers. And also just standing here is gonna drain also a lot of our numbers, so we probably should start, a, start the attack. I mean, we cannot just let them sit around here. That they're, they're gonna jump on here. Okay, you need to reinforce that as well. Oh, fuck off! Ah, oh, these guys are gonna die from that. Yeah. At least not wiped completely. That was upsetting. That was just upsetting. <laughs> I guess we're just gonna have mercenaries for quite a while. I mean, we did hurt them enough here at least. You guys are not gonna reinforce anyway. The mercenaries are gonna reinforce. They're currently sitting in the jungle. Of 
course they were just a second too late. And of course you immediately get the fucking walls broken again. Screw you. <laughs> I don't like you. I mean this one should now be a lot easier. It's good that we have so many allies to protect us. But we're gonna quickly do this. Don't tell me I'm losing this fucking fight as well. There we go. For a second I was a little bit worried. Are we arriving before they get a tick? Good. So. We are gonna have to split a little bit off here. We're gonna just use the mercenaries for siege. But at this point we can call in... You guys? Hey, guys, why not joining? Oh, because the war took too long. Alright. Uh, Kohai is out. Sorta. They're nearly out. Uh, we can do this. We cannot do this here, though. So we're just gonna have to wait. Yeah, this is gonna take forever. But there was a reason why I immediately took the loans. I knew that we were gonna want to do an early war. So I guess one thing that we're also gonna do is actually finish up the... Auto mission? Because we, we might as well make use of that, right? Of that... Uh, extra military po power that we're gonna gain from that. So. And that is just a bunch of claims again, but also a little bit extra. While we may boast that we have the most well-equipped discipline, trained army in all of Yanshan, we must further boast our numbers if we are to achieve our goal of bringing all of Yanshan under our rule. To see to this, we must conscript young, able-bodied warriors of Bian Fang. As much as some may process, but they will soon realize that the only way we will unite the young people is to build an unstoppable military and conquer all those who stand against us. Conquering the bordering Yingyu provinces to the north would be an excellent first test for our newly conscripted warriors, as well as establish a foothold for further conquest in the area. Whatever. Let's quickly remove that occupation. That probably makes them happy anyway. I'm very willing to just piece them out, to be honest. Also, this army is not doing anything yet, so if I just take one occupation here, that should be enough to maybe make them realize that they should be out. And just short drusing them might also be a good idea. Oh, more kobolds. So, before we have to fight more nonsense, I think this is just the right decision. God damn it. Maybe this is gonna convince them. Yep, they're low. I can't even get a bit of money out of them. No, I cannot. Well, that's not wouldn't be much anyway. Alright. Bugger off. We now just need to wait for this single uh, occupation to be done here. And then we are right. Let's also put ourselves in position so these guys don't car carry over. I don't think they would have made much of a difference. I can need, I need them later on. For now, I think... Building up favors with you or you? You, Tianlu. Might be the right decision. Because you are gonna give me manpower. That I quite desperately need. I'm in minus 15,000. <laughs> yes, clearly the most well-disciplined army around. So didn't, you, didn't you see that? <laughs> Come on, just get the siege done. At least we will have a bunch more territory. And we're gonna have to keep the mercenaries around, so... I think we are gonna at least... Slurp you together. To solve this one here a little bit. And you're just gonna join this army. Uh, that is at least Edmund. Oh, I'm gonna need that, but I think I'm willing to get this early. So. This is basically this mission. Let's see. Can we take all of that without interference? Kohai, Kudet Kai, Lian Chu, Jingguan. Okay, we are just gonna do that before the month ends. 
Because it makes sense that we get rid of uh, get rid of these guys. So. A decent bit, bit of money as well. Sure. Let's make use of everything. What do we have here? Fortress of Estate? Sure, let's give that one a go. Military scholars say that supreme excellence consists of breaking the enemy's resistance without fighting. As mighty as our army is, rushing headlong into a full frontal assault of Hubao or the Tiger Fort or Stadium Marley that composed the fortress defenders call it, it would be suicide. Therefore we must capture the fort through other means. We will sever the supply lines, raid nearby farming settlements and lay waste to their fortifications with siege weaponry. We must break their will all without having to shed a drop of blood and leave them no choice but to surrender to the might of Bian Fang. So we can f solve this by opinion? They're only allied with me. Over to the, the Tiger Fort. Are we just gonna declare war on them? Let's see. Now I'm curious to be honest. I mean you have to do this one here. Get a leader. Uh, let's also start with some of this. We could sponsor harvest festivals, which gives us a stability. That's not the worst idea. Cost a lot of money, but there we go. Benevolent. Unrest in years of separate. I guess I should have done that before. Whatever. We get admin as well. Lovely. So we have great power right away. Cool, cool. In the throne room of Bian Fang, Dragon King Xin Shu Long pushes two objects toward the marshal, kowtowing before him. Yan Yan Lin Shi. The first is an ornate carved sandal wood chest, with fine gold inlay depicting a mighty Harimari warrior vanquishing a horned ogre. In the box is a scroll composed to Xinshu's like elegant calligraphy, a letter extolling the virtues of Baka, Marshal of Hubao, fellow guardians of the borders of Yanshan. It notes his clear martial prowess have been chosen by his fellow soldiers to lead them and his deft skill as an administrator and protector of the hill folk clustered around the fort. It subtly weaves in Hubao's history of conditional obes obeisance, I'm not sure what that word is, to the Phoenix Empire and its successors, submitting to a greater power while retaining some autonomy. It makes clear that Xin Shu is similarly courting the Tiger Four to be an honored subject of Bian Fang. The second object is simply a, is a simple Iron Dao, the symbol of authority for Marshal leading the armies of Bian Fang and administrating the territories they conquer. Such a force had already mustered, ready to march to the board of Xin, Xin Bao. Marshal Xi finishes the counter and looks up at his sovereign, waiting for him to choose. This is benevolent. This is... So, oh, basically, we take their leader and we get a cast a spell on them, or we... allow them to con uh, become, make them a vessel? I think that's what this is. I'm tending to more towards this here, anyway. Because I don't want another fight. Right? Or what is this? There we go. Okay. Cost me money. As Marshal Yan Lin Shi finishes the kowtow, he pushes the ornate standard box towards Dragon King Xing Shu, along with a look of triumph. Inside is a scroll addressed to him from Baka of the Withering Wind, written in sharp, claw-like characters. As in Dragon King's letter to the command of the Tiger Four, the Marshal of Ubao heaps praise and accol accolades upon his counterpart, fellow shield of Yanjin against the monsters and barbarians to the north, whose warriors are as strong and swift as the mighty Yan He. With gratuitous humility, Marshal Baka laments that Ubao cannot reach its full defensive potential, lacking the coin to feed its soldiers purchase weapons and make repairs to the fortress. It poses the question of whether a generous benefactor could restore Hubao to its reputation as an impregnable fortress. Seeing through the flattery and pleasant falsehood, Dragon King Sinshu understands perfectly what is required for Hubao's conditional obeisance. Dispatching a courtier to make arrangements with the treasury of the fort a bribe, Sinshu turns his attention to Yan Lin Shi. Fuck me, this is gonna but this is gonna be awful for the rest of the campaign anyway. The Marshal has proven himself as a shrewd diplomat, perhaps we, he would be more useful sipping tea with foreign dignitaries than spilling blood on the battlefield. And we also get him as an advisor, okay. But we spend money, they turn into a march. I think this is probably far more reasonable. This probably would take a lot of uh, effort to get done anyway. So we are gonna continue on here. Let's also get rid of 
one of you guys. I think we're probably gonna get rid of you. Yeah. Because we need money now. Money and manpower, to be precise. So. Uh, we also got a decent bit of power protection. Reckless of has no army. Cool. <coughs> so. We actually now have the force limit to hold the kind of change I made. So I guess that's good. You guys just go back to strength. We will keep clicking this here. We're probably gonna have a rebellion. Oh, PM for noble rebels. Or oh, maybe we can get rid of that before bad things happen. But now we have uh, someone helping us out here. Still no war here. Okay, well, if we have enough money, we can get Hubao better fortified. We can get them integrated later anyway. So I'm quite happy. Uh, let's start paying the army. Still not making money. Fort maintenance. I mean, this one is just an absolutely useless fort, right? I mean, I guess there's a temple. Ah, yes, there's a fucking temple. We're gonna let this fort here clear this bro uh, clear this up stuff up, and then we're gonna get rid of it. And this just needs this last st uh, uh, thingy here and fighting. And we do seem to be changing some province, uh, some provinces. <coughs> yeah, this is gonna take forever, but we will see if. Uh, okay, seven hundred eighty. I assume it is the most that we can make here. Oh no, they actually have more. But I assume that you guys have more money. So there's that. Are uh, we gonna keep this one around? But I guess we're also gonna end the episode here anyway. A unpleasant first fight, but it's alright. Uh, either way, we're gonna end the episode here. So, like always, like I said, I'm Arjun Arnigans. I guess see you guys next episode. Bye!